Hey everyone, Mike from Video Maker here. Hey, I'm making you a quick video to tell you about a new series we're doing, which is a Video Maker Q&A. So every week, we're gonna be making a video that answers one of your questions. Now you can ask us a question by putting it in the comments section of this video, or you can find us on Facebook and send us a message there, or you can email us at editor at videomaker.com, or best yet, use Twitter, because we like to keep these questions short and sweet. Okay, now our first question comes from a reader named Terry. Terry emails us and asks us, has anyone ever used Dropbox as a collaboration platform for video editing? That's a great question, Terry, and the answer is yeah, there has been. Actually, we at VideoMaker have used Dropbox as a collaboration tool for video editing. Uh, most commonly, it's used just to transfer files back and forth from one editor or a shooter to another. And for that, it works really well. Um, although it can get a little pricey. Now there are other ways to use Dropbox or other cloud storage services as a video editing uh, collaboration tool, which I'll get into in a minute. But first I wanna talk about pricing. Dropbox is widely popular and they just have really great branding. But in reality, they're pretty expensive compared to the competition. So Dropbox will give you about 100 gigabytes of data for $10 a month. And now its nearest competitors is gonna be services like Box, which give you also 100 gigs for $10 a month. However, better options we believe are Google and uh, Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. Now, Microsoft OneDrive and Google Drive give you the same amount, 100 gigabytes for $2 a month instead of $10 a month. Now, Microsoft OneDrive goes up to a 200 gig plan for $4 a month, effectively just doubling the price, but their pricing scheme doesn't seem to go beyond that unless you're gonna be an enterprise customer. Google, on the other hand, will give you one terabyte of data for only $10 a month. So that's really our service of choice. And it works out because Google Drive is pretty ubiquitous. Just about any software or service that works with Dropbox also works with Google Drive. Okay, so let's say you have a cloud storage service you really like and you wanna use. So how do you actually use it? Well, like I said, the most common way to use a cloud storage service is just to put files in for transfer. As in, you've got files, your editor or another editor wants to work on the same files, you just put them in Dropbox and they go download them. Um, that's really the easiest way to do it and that's how we did it at VideoMaker. Basically, we had freelance videographers who shot some stuff and they were gonna edit it into a short video, but they need to use our assets like our music, our introductory animation, our sound effects, our lower thirds, uh, that kind of thing. So we use Dropbox, and actually now we're using Google Drive to just send all those assets out. We just, they live online as templates, and then anyone who we give access to can go in there and download those templates. And then when they're done, they just put everything back up on Google Drive, it used to be Dropbox, um, and we can download it from them. And that works with anyone in the country or the world for that matter, who has access to fast, reliable internet service. Now, the more interesting way to use these cloud storage services is to install their software locally on your computer and then edit straight from that folder. Basically how it works is if you use uh, OneDrive or Dropbox or Google Drive, you can download their software and it puts a shortcut or a, a folder on your computer, which when you put files in there, syncs up to Dropbox or, or whatever the the service is. So for video production, the version of this is you have, uh, let's say five video clips and a project file like a Premiere Pro file. Um, if you put all those in the file folder uh, on your local machine, either Dropbox or Google Drive, let's stick with Dropbox for now. Um, basically when you're editing, you're not making any changes to the video files themselves. So what that means is once you put the files in, they only upload once except for the project file, the Premiere file, which is very small by comparison to the video clips. So if you have your five project files and your one Premiere file in your Dropbox folder, you can open that Premiere file on your computer, edit it, do whatever you want with it, and save it, and it will just simply upload this very small, probably a few megabyte files up to Dropbox. Now someone else on the other side of the country can download everything, which again, it's a big download to start because there's all the video files and then they can open your Premiere file and start working on it. And again, as soon as they save that file, it will save and upload just the Premiere file back up to Dropbox, not touching the video files because when you're editing video, you're not making any changes to those initial files. Now, there are a few things to be cautious of if you wanna go this route. The first being really that if two people are working on the same Premiere project at the same time, Dropbox doesn't know how to handle those multiple versions and they may get their wires crossed somewhere. So what we recommend is every time you open a new uh, version of that Premiere file, save a new version so that you and someone else aren't working on the same file at the same time. Secondly, because of how Dropbox works on your individual computer, 
Uh, when your editor on the other side of the country opens up the same file, they'll likely have to relink all of the video files because on your computer you might have it saved at C colon user slash desktop or whatever it is, whereas them on the other side of the country might be working on a Mac and they don't have a C drive or they're working off a PC and it's on a second drive and it's a you know, F drive or something. Now with older editing software, this might be a big deal, but with modern editing software, it's really not. You just relink the first file and it finds all the others relative to that single file's position. So, you know, it might add an extra five minutes per uh, every time you wanna open it and work on your file. So not a huge deal. Now the best practice here is to set your render files and your scratch file to somewhere else other than your Dropbox folder. If you don't do it, it's gonna save your scratch files and your render files in the same folder as your project file on Dropbox, which means it's constantly gonna be uploading render video files, which is gonna clog up your internet. So that's it in a nutshell. Can you use Dropbox or other cloud storage providers for video editing collaboration? You certainly can, but it's not perfect yet. That's it, hopefully that answered the question. Now I also wanna mention if you're at all interested in getting tutorials and articles delivered straight to your inbox, click on this button and join our Video Maker e-news newsletter group. Uh, all you have to do is go to the top right corner of the page at videomaker.com, punch in your email address, and we'll start sending you tutorials and articles right away. Thanks for watching.